Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. We left off last night talking about Les Wexner, L Brands, and Victoria's Secret, and the pickle that they find themselves in. Now, there are a lot of underlying issues with Victoria's Secret, and we've covered all of them. But the number one issue for this company and for L Brands is the fact that Les Wexner is still the CEO. Now, none of these guys who are looking, these venture capitalists who are looking to scoop up Victoria's Secret are going to acquiesce to Wexner staying on the board. It's just not going to happen. He's tainted at this point, and we're starting to see the cracks in the facade, right? We're starting to see the holes in his armor. And it's, it's coming out in trickles, folks. We, the, the stories that we've covered lately and the stories we've covered previously, they're coming out in trickles. But eventually all of those trickles, those little, uh, those little drops of rain, are going to turn into a monsoon. And once it happens, it's going to come fast and it's going to come furious. Once Wexner is out of a position where he's able to pull the strings and have the media fear him still, the gates are going to open. But until then... We're going to keep putting people like him on blast on this podcast. We're not going to shy away from it. We're not going to sit back and, and wait for somebody else to do it. Jeffrey Epstein is, is, is dead, but the enablers are still here, right? The people that helped him commit these crimes, the people that enabled these crimes are still here. And Wexner is certainly one of the top candidates for people who should really, really, really face the music for their involvement with Jeffrey Epstein. They were attached at the hip. And now we see that Wexner is starting to feel the fallout from this. Now, we only know what has been pushed publicly to us. We don't know what has happened in the boardroom. We don't know what the other members of the board have to say. And we don't know what the temperature is because, obviously, we don't have that sort of inside information. But from the outside looking in and looking at the numbers and looking at what the analysts at places like Credit Suisse are saying about L Brands and Victoria's Secret, it's obvious to anyone who follows the market that these guys are in huge trouble at this point. It is all about to start coming down for Wexner. He's, he's going to get pushed out of both of these companies, and I'm gonna, I'll make the prediction that by the end of this year, Wexner is pushed out of both of these companies, and he's facing an onslaught. That is my prediction. Now, today, we're going to jump over, and it's almost like I'm a psychic, right? I mentioned this guy in one of the podcasts, maybe yesterday, the day before, uh, Jess Staley. Now, Jess Staley is a billionaire guy, banker, and he... Uh, you know, he's been in the uh, the banking world for 34 years. He spent 34 years at J.P. Morgan. And we know that Epstein did a lot of business with J.P. Morgan, right? So in 2013, uh, Staley left J.P. Morgan and he moved over to a place called Blue Mountain Capital. Well, he was only there for about two years. And uh, December 1st, he moved over to Barclays as the CEO. Now, his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, well... He was hanging out with Epstein after Epstein was convicted. He's not one of these guys that was, uh, oh, well, I didn't know. I, he was never in trouble. No. Jess Staley was hanging out with Epstein before he was convicted. And we all know that J.P. Morgan is not on the up and up. We all know about J.P. Morgan's lending practices. We all know how smarmy they are. And now he's over at Barclays. Well, folks... He is under investigation while being probed for his links to Jeffrey Epstein. So now we have Glenn Dubin, who is getting the, the axe, Les Wexner, who is on the ropes. And now we have Jess Staley entering the fray. Let me introduce you to, to a new person for us to take a nice hard look at, folks. Another scuzzball who thought it was okay to pal around with Jeffrey Epstein after the fact. Another scuzzball who stands on his ivory tower and yells down at the rest of us. Another scuzzball who, is a he who donates heavily in politics. This is a big problem, folks. Guys like this... In, in, in politics, donating big money, being bundlers are a big, gigantic problem. And I'll go out and say it right now, right here. Anybody who has accepted money from Jess Staley politically needs to give it back. I'll be doing a dig into that as well to see who he's lent, who he's lent money, who, who he donated money to and who he's involved with. Because men like this are always, always hip deep with Epstein, it seems like. All right, to the article. 
Barclays reveals its CEO is being probed over links to Jeffrey Epstein. The, uh, uh, the article was uh, authored by Sylvia Amaro, and it's from CNBC. Barclays chief executive Jeff, Jess Staley is being investigated over his links to Jeffrey Epstein, the American financier, pedophile, and convicted sex offender who committed suicide in jail last year, <laughs> allegedly. Media reports over the last six months have indicated historical ties between Staley and Epstein. 100%. I, we, we've talked about it before, not in depth, but Staley ha- and Epstein were thick as thieves. These guys were, were, were really close, all right? They weren't just, you know, acquaintances. They weren't, you know, just guys that might have hung out once in a while. They were buddies, all right? They were close. According to Barclays on Thursday, Staley developed a professional relationship with Epstein earlier in his career, but they had no contact since Staley joined the British bank in 2015. Oh, that's convenient, huh? That's convenient. Let me go out on a limb here, folks, all right, and say that Staley and Epstein were still in contact. Staley was still in contact with all of his buddies, I'm sure. And uh, Staley's another one of these guys that'll come out and say, well, I really didn't know Epstein. I had no idea what he was up to. Meanwhile, this guy was the CEO of J.P. Morgan. He knew. He knew exactly what was going on. In a statement issued Thursday, Barclays said the relationship between Staley and Epstein is the subject of an ongoing inquiry from a UK regulator, the Financial Conduct Authority, and the company had responded. Now, that's very interesting. So, it's a, uh, a financial authority that's looking into Staley and Epstein. Now, we all know that these rich people launder money like it's nobody's business. They have 5,000 billion little... Uh, you know, front groups, and they wash their money, and they move it right along. And we've seen that with Epstein. We've seen what he was doing in the Virgin Islands. We saw what he was doing with that silly-ass bank. We saw what he's done with all the trusts. And Mr. Staley, well, maybe Mr. Staley's doing the same exact thing, folks. Do I have any evidence of that? No, I do not. But a man like this that hung out with Jeffrey Epstein, a man that was in charge of J.P. Morgan, a man that rolls in these circles, mm, I don't trust him. Sorry, I don't trust him. As a result, the bank's board has decided to unanimously as a result, the bank's board has decided to unanim- unanimously suggest the re-election of Staley as the bank's chief executive with the vote due in May at the company's annual general meeting. Well, that's tone deaf, huh? Barclays is going to re-elect this man as their chief executive considering his ties to Jeffrey Epstein, probably not the best idea that they've ever had. As has, as has been widely reported earlier in his career, Mr. Staley developed a professional relationship with Mr. Epstein. In the summer of 2019, in light of the renewed media interest in the relationship, Mr. Staley volunteered and gave to certain executives and the chairman an explanation, an explanation of his relationship with Mr. Epstein, the bank said in the statement. Well, there you have it, folks. Staley told them the, about the relationship, so that's that. We don't need any more information. We shouldn't dig any deeper. Staley's an honest guy. How couldn't he be? He's a rich CEO. These people are never lie. They would never abuse anybody. They'd never be involved in human trafficking. I mean, really? Really? Again, let's investigate ourselves. We're going to investigate ourselves because that always works out well. That always gets us to where we're going. We always find out answers when we do that. Such a joke. It's so, it's so ridiculous at this point. It is so ridiculous at this point. Mr. Staley also confirmed to the board that he has had no contact whatsoever with Mr. Epstein at any time since taking up his role as Barclays Group CEO in December of 2015. So, all of a sudden, they were friends up until 2015. Epstein was money, moving mad money through, through J.P. Morgan, right? Now, all of a sudden, the second he signs on at Barclays, him and Epstein aren't talking anymore. They just stop. They, no more contact because he's at Barclays. Why is that? Why is that? Epstein wasn't even under investigation in 2015 again, all right? So, for Staley to say that he had no contact whatsoever with Mr. Epstein, I highly doubt it. And I'll tell you what, folks, I think it's time to start looking for some information that counters that point. Because there has to be emails out there, there has to be phone records, something that connects Staley to Jeffrey Epstein after 2015. And if that's the case, if that information comes forward, then Staley needs to step down from his position because he's obviously a liar. We know that, but he's been caught now lying. Willie, 
Highly doubt it. These people have no honor. These people don't care. These people are sharks. All these people care about is advancing the good old mighty dollar. Staley, an American citizen, began working at Barclays in December of 2015. Prior to that, he worked for J.P. Morgan for more than 30 years, 34 years, and briefly at Blue Mountain Capital for two years. The New York Times reported in July that Epstein had funneled dozens of wealthy clients to Staley, which may have helped him take his career to the next level. CNBC was unable to independently verify the report. Look, I've talked to several people on Wall Street, people that work on the market, and the people I have talked to have all said the same thing, that Staley is dirty as hell, and that the the New York Times story of Epstein funneling dozens of wealthy clients has legs and it's legit. So it's definitely something I'm going to dig deeper into. I happen to have a few contacts on the street, a few people that I know that work on the market in pretty, uh, pretty high positions, I guess you would say, so I can actually go to the horse's mouth and get some... Uh, some information. So I'm definitely going to do that and find out a little bit more about the the funneling of these wealthy clients if I can, because it's been reported in several places, right, that that's happened. And CNBC obviously is unable to independently verify that report, which which that happens sometimes. Sources won't talk to everybody. Every, you know, some sources are only comfortable talking to certain uh, certain journalists. So that's why a lot of times you'll only see one um one paper uh, be able to confirm something, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Epstein, who had some prominent connections within Wall Street and also famous acquaintances such as the UK's Prince Andrew, was charged with sex trafficking of teenage girls in July. Epstein was also a registered sex offender as a result of pleading guilty in 2008 to state charges filed in Florida related to prostitution involving an underage girl. There's that stupid comment again. Prostitution and an underage girl. An underage girl cannot be a prostitute. He hanged himself in Manhattan's Metropolitan Correctional Center in August, allegedly. The British lender also updated investors on its latest results Thursday. It reported a net income of $2.46 billion in 2019 in line with market expectations. Analysts had forecast a net income of $2.4 billion for the year, according to, the, to a Reuters poll. Going forward, the British bank wants to achieve a return on tangible equity above 10%. However, it is said that given global macroeconomic uncertainty and the current low interest rate environment, it has become more challenging to achieve this in 2020. Yeah, never mind the fact that it's going to be on blast that your CEO, Jess Staley, was one of Epstein's goons, was hanging out with Epstein, was was getting money funneled to him from Epstein. Look, folks, all of these clowns, all of these clowns should be slapped with Rico and they should all be charged with being part of an ongoing criminal conspiracy because it's obvious to me. I don't have any evidence of this, folks, all right? No hard evidence of this. But it's obvious to me that Staley was also involved in laundering money with Jeffrey Epstein. Staley's pay is set to also increase to 5.9 million pounds this year from 3.36 million pounds last year. Shares of the British lender are up by 13.4% over the last year, but dropped by more than 2% in early European trade on Thursday. And that was all predicated on this new investigation. So they lost 2% on Thursday, uh, a move that came after it was announced that Staley is under investigation by the, uh, the regulatory committee, the Financial Conduct Authority in UK. So we see it happening, folks. It's coming, right? The whole entire house of cards is falling in on their head. And piece by piece, article by article, podcast by podcast, we're putting the net over these scumbags and making it so they have nowhere to go. And we're going to continue doing that. We're going to continue pulling on these threads. We're going to continue chasing down these leads. And we're going to continue to bring you, you folks, the truth. Because we're not getting it from the media. They always want us to read between the lines. They always want to, you know, give us just a little bit and hold back the rest to protect their friends. Well, that's unacceptable at this point, and it's not going to happen. Certainly not going to happen on this podcast. We're going to expose all of these people, and we're going to follow the evidence wherever it leads. And it doesn't matter who it leads to, folks, be it Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, the Pope. It does not matter. Whoever it leads to needs to be held accountable. Whoever's, whoever was involved in this needs to be held accountable. All of these money men, 
need to be held accountable. Jeff Staley has no business running this company at this point, in my opinion. He needs to step down, do the honorable thing like Glenn Dubin, do the honorable thing like your buddies, and step down because there is no way in hell that he's going to be able to survive what's coming for him. Because the, the digging has just begun into Jess Staley. The digging has just begun. And nobody thought that Wexner would be where he's at. Nobody thought that Dubin would be stepping down. Nobody thought that Prince Andrew would be stepping back from public life. But here we are, folks. And Jess Staley, well, you're on the clock, pal. If you folks would like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. And also, folks, if you would like to help support the podcast and you would like to make a donation, you can find the GoFundMe uh, uh, link inside of the description box. And with, with those, with that GoFundMe money, we're using it to go to different locations. Our first trip is Santa Fe, and then we'll be going to, you know, different places uh, covering this case, wherever wherever it leads us, folks, all right? So, I will be back later on. Like I said, I'm going to do a uh, an evolution episode today about Gwendolyn Beck, and then, of course, I'll be back later on for the Daily Drop. All right, everybody, enjoy your Thursday, and I will talk to you later.